everyone, you're watching PokerNews.com and welcome back to our coverage of the World Series of Poker. It is official, we are down to just nine players in the World Series of Poker. I am with Griffin Benger, who just happens to be one of those nine players. Now Griff, we go way back. You won the Shark Cage. Thank you. Yeah. You won a million dollars. You used to be a professional video gamer, yeah. which is pretty amazing. So we're trying to get for our audience a little get to know you. So first off, let's talk a little bit about your about your pre-poker gaming life. Okay, before we get into that, can I just say, yeah. whenever she starts an interview, it sounds like she has just been laughing, and it's always true. Yeah. She's actually always saying something so hilarious, or I'm saying something so hilarious. So if you think that's some sort of like fake thing, that's a real Sarah Herring bit. Yeah. To People complain question, about that on YouTube sometimes. I'm sure they do. So, to answer your question, my pre-gaming days, ask the question again. Yeah, so be, you're pre-poker. Yes. In the midst of your gaming yes. days, tell us a little bit about what was your, you know, what was the platform you were on? Oh, you were like man. number one for a long time. Yeah, so I was a part of like one of the best, if not the best, Counter-Strike team for many, many years in the early 2000s, which feels like, it's a bit of a time warp thing. Like, I, I f feel like it was, if someone asked me, like a few months ago, someone asked me, like, oh, when did you play Counter-Strike? I would say, like, ah, five, six, seven years ago. No, it feels like, it's just, it doesn't feel like it was a decade ago, but it also feels like a lifetime ago. So that was when I was sort of doing that. And then I just naturally transitioned into poker because everyone was bugging me. They were just like, you got to try this. It's so perfect for you. And, uh, you know. Here we are. So 2011, you were the yeah. number one online poker player, yeah. which is a great accomplishment. But Thank you, you. you didn't stop there. You, after you know, since I guess you should say in the interim now, you've also yeah. been commentating for the GPL. So tell me a little bit about uh, you know doing things outside of poker because in fact this was the only tournament that you played this year at the World Series of Poker. Yeah, you know, the GPL really helped me because I'm someone who is predominantly incredibly lazy. Um, I just, I, I, it's hard, it's hard for these, situa these situations because when you say these things you don't want to sound really um, narcissistic or whatever, but it's just like a lot of things come really naturally to me and they come very easy to me. So it's, I think it's created a very lazy monster in me where I can just sort of show up and I can usually just wing it. And to be honest with you, it's like I didn't really do a lot of prep even in the context of GPL. I just went in there and I just like have this huge knowledge base and I have this crazy memory where I can really draw from experiences that I've had and I don't really need to write things down. If I started to do it, I could probably be even better. But in the context of like with the GPL, I never watched a single training video for a poker. I never read a single book and I just like to, to actually be forced to watch and actually pay attention to the best poker players in the world 18 hours a week for eight weeks. It just was the most ultimate crash course training to play like one of the best in the world. And I really think that's what happened to me over the course of this tournament. I feel incredibly grateful and lucky to have stumbled in to such an opportunity like the GPL because that is the best learning tool. It's not even close to anything that you can find on the internet. I mean, I wouldn't really know because I don't watch any other training videos, but I just know how much it helped me. And I think that it was just a beautiful, uh, a beautiful experience. You know, that's funny. I was talking to David Tuckman about that just a few weeks ago. Also, just being able to talk out hands and see all the yeah. different ways people are playing. It's it definitely puts you in, in, an, in an edge sort of position in some ways. Yeah. Now, that being said, you admitting that you are somewhat of a lazy man yes. character. Uh, what can we expect from you in the next couple months? Um, probably a bit more of the same. I feel like I've, <laughs> I've done my I've done my training. I know that there's some things I need to do to be as prepared as possible and it's really important to have a lot of perspective with that sort of thing. Um, I need to think about it more. This is all still really fresh. I mean, we only broke for the November 9 about 15 hours ago or something like that. So I'm going to have a great support system around me. I already do. That's really going to be able to guide me and, sh and show me what the best course of action is. But at the end of the day, I think I'm always going to do what's true to myself. And I think I'm not as lazy as I used to be. I'm, I've definitely matured a lot in the last few years, especially in the last year, to know that there's certain things that I have to do that I don't necessarily want to do. And I'm willing to, to do that and know that this is part of the journey. Well, also, I just wanted to mention that this is um, even more plus EV for you because actually you qualified for this tournament. Yeah. So you're not even in for the full 10K? Yeah, I'm in for about a thousand bucks. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. So 88 qualifier. Yeah. Griffin Benger. I'm Those Sarah Those satellites, Herring. by the way, are, I mean, 
they're they're soft. I'll just be honest. I mean, they have great steps on eight day poker to allow people that um, wouldn't normally normally be in a one thousand buy in tournament to uh, to try to qualify for the main event. And uh, I play like the one sixty steps to the one thousand steps. And but they even have I think thirty dollars steps to the one sixties and maybe even lower. So it's a really good stepping stool for anyone that has a couple hundred bucks in their account that want to try to run it up and have this experience. I definitely recommend it. I'm not just saying that. I'm not wearing a patch right now. Like it was just uh, it's it was it was uh, it was such a gift that eight 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 was able to give me this opportunity. And you're a gift for 888 and for all of us. We so look forward to watching you on October 30th, November 9th, or Griffin Benger. I'm Sarah Herring. You're with us on PokerNews.com. Oh.